Okay, so we're back for the final one. Um, as I am writing this down, or as I'm sort of... There we go, that's a good spot. As I'm doing this, notice I've erased the definition of the limit. So it would be good for you to fill this in. Think about what that is. How do you define it? It's something that we, that you need to know. Something that should just be on the tip of your tongue. Right at the front of your mind. Okay, that's enough time. It's defined as a limit. It's the limit, as some dummy variable goes to zero, of this difference quotient, f, which is our original function of x plus h minus f of x. This is a change in height from x to x plus h, all over h. That's the change in in uh, domain value from x over to x plus h. The difference is only h. So this is a slope, and this is a limit of that slope. This is the instantaneous slope of our function at x, which is just some value in its domain. Okay, so here's the function that we're working with here. We're going to go with x squared divided by o x plus 6. Okay. It's a pretty algorithmic thing that we're doing here. The next thing that we always do after being given our function is find this, f of x plus h. Okay, and that is just x plus h squared, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, all divided by x plus h plus 6. And now we just need to find this difference quotient. We're probably going to end up simplifying it quite a bit, and then we'll end up taking our limit. So here we go. Hold on. f of x plus h. Minus f of x. All divided by h. Compound fractions, yay. Let's get rid of this one by multiplying by 1 over h on top and bottom. Right. And then, make sure we do it like that. And we're also going to find a common denominator for these two fractions so that we can take the difference. That common denominator is going to be this denominator times this denominator. Here we go then. This denominator does not have this factor of x plus 6, so this up here is going to be multiplied by that. So x squared plus 2xh plus h squared times x plus 6, this times this. This denominator does not have this factor in it, so this is going to be multiplied by here and here. So x squared is multiplied by it. x plus h plus 6. Okay. Our common denominator again was the product of these two. That's why we had to multiply those factors through over there. So it is x plus h plus 6 times x plus 6. And we can't forget this little guy over here. The 1 over h we multiply by in order to get rid of the compound fraction. It's always wise after doing a lot of algebra to just check. I already missed a negative sign on the first video. So just double check. We have a wonderful situation here where we need to multiply things out. Oh boy. You can make little tricks happen along the way. Let's see if I can do this a little faster. So this on the right, I'll write this in green above it. Notice we're going to take x squared and we're going to multiply it by x plus h plus 6. And over here we've got an x plus 6 multiplied by stuff. What if I write this like this? Minus x squared times x plus 6. So I take the x squared and multiply it by this sum, and then I add that to x squared times h. That's okay, right? Yeah, that's fine. And then, what do I see over here on the left? Well, I've got, when I distribute this, I'm going to get x squared times x plus 6. Right? This whole thing gets multiplied here, 
and here, and here. Well, one of those cancels out with this. Doesn't it? The first one does. x squared times x plus 6 is then subtracted, is then reduced by the first thing we have in this sum, x squared times x plus 6. So that cancels out all together. So I'm not even going to write it over here. So what we have left over is 2xh times x plus 6 plus h squared times x plus 6. Okay. So that's this distribution and this distribution. This one canceled out. Minus whatever was left. We canceled this with this. So we're left with minus x squared times h. And things are looking okay <laughs> for now. <laughs> Here we go. Just double check your math, like I said. Okay, here we go. In the denominator, nothing has changed. We've got h times x plus h plus 6 times x plus 6. And we're going to see if anything cancels out. And wouldn't you know, every single term up here has at least a factor of h. Here we actually have two factors of h, which means that term is going to disappear when we take the limit. So for now, we're going to cancel, we're going to factor out, rather, one h from each of these. So this h, the square here, goes down to 1. The h that was here, they all get factored out to that, which is great because we cancel those. Okay. And from there, we have to just ask ourselves again, can we take this limit? I think the answer is yes, we can. We definitely can. So, up top, okay, what do we have left? We've got just 2x times x plus 6. If we want to rewrite that, we can. Maybe it'll be helpful. 2x times x is x squared. Plus 6 is plus 12x. I'm going to save this term for later. That's okay. There's a minus x squared then. Minus x squared, notice that takes away this, 2x, so that's just x squared. Okay, so the 2x squared minus the x squared brings us to 1x squared. We've got 12x. There's no other x's on the board except for here, this h term. So now I'm going to add that h term back in, and I'm not going to distribute that because it's going to disappear with this limit. When h goes to 0, we'll have h just getting smaller and smaller times x plus 6. And the denominator stays the same. I'm not going to take the time to foil this out. And the reason is, when h goes to 0, this turns into x plus 6. This is going to basically become an x squared, x plus 6 squared. Okay? So there we go. We've got x plus h plus 6, x plus 6. Now, can we take these limits? Up top and on bottom, we have polynomials, which are continuous on the domain. Right? They're continuous everywhere. So we can find their limits by plugging in the value that we're taking the limit at, which is 0. The only question is, do we get 0 when we take that plug-in method in the denominator? And we get the answer, no. We get h plus 6 times 6, which means we can find the individual limits. The denominator's limit is not 0. So by the quotient law for limits, we can take that one limit and write it as the limit of the top divided by the limit of the bottom. Okay. So we've got a product in the denominator. You can find the limit of each piece, which means we can take the limit of, the, of each individual piece and then multiply them together. Um, up top, it's just a polynomial. We're just going to plug that in. In 
fact, this denominator, if you were to multiply that, would just be a polynomial, in which case you just plug that in. So now we just evaluate these limits. Nothing happens to x squared because it doesn't depend on h. Nothing happens to 12x because it doesn't depend on h. This does depend on h through multiplication. So this term goes away entirely. x squared plus 12x. In the denominator, any term, if we were to multiply this out, any term that has an h multiplied by it is going to go away. Right? Which means what you're going to have in the end, if you were to work backwards for factoring it, is you're going to have x plus 6 times x plus 6. Maybe this h just goes to 0. x plus 6 times x plus 6. There you have it. There's the last bonus derivative. I hope I didn't miss a minus sign. I think that looks good. Let me double check. It should be 2x times x plus 6 minus x squared times 1. Yep. All divided by x plus 6 squared. Yes. Okay. This is right. So that's it. I hope these movies were helpful for you. I'll see you in class.